skin or through the skin. Where is the inside when we talk about endocrine? Well, endocrine hormones secrete hormones into the blood. That's the inside. That is really the inside of the body. That's the sacred space, as we've said so many times in the Bible. The life of the body is in the blood. It's the holy of holies. The blood is the holy of holies, and nothing gets into the blood unless it's been vetted and purified. And there's an assurance that it's not going to mess things up. This is the problem with leaky gut syndrome. This is the problem with digestive health issues. Crap food and undigested food because of a lack of enzymes, by the way, digestive enzymes, a lot of the times, get into the blood. And this is where disease comes from. We said this so many times. The life of the body is in the blood. It is the sacred space. When we talk about endocrine hormones, we're talking about hormones that go into the blood. And from there, because the blood contacts everything in the body, once the endocrine hormones go into the, into the blood, they can contact every single cell in the body. If you could look inside your blood, you would see it absolutely packed with endocrine hormones floating through, every, through the blood and, uh, and contacting every single cell in the body. You've got 100 trillion of them. I'm telling you, to me, that is one of the most astounding aspects of all of bio... Of, every, of anything. I was going to say all of biochemistry and all of biology, but really of being alive, that we have a hundred trillion little entities, independent entities, that are somehow cooperating with each other in a congruent and coherent enough fashion to create us. In a congruent and coherent enough fashion that we don't even know we're made up of compo as a composite. We're made up of a hundred trillion living entities and how these living entities communicate with each other and how they operate in such a coherent fashion, well, you can thank your hormones because that's the job of the hormones. Via the activity of the hormones, the body becomes a unified whole. All the cells of the body operate coherently and congruently via the activity of the hormones, the endocrine hormones, the hormones in the blood. So the glands secrete hormones into the blood, and from there, they contact every single cell in the body. The adrenal glands are your classic endocrine glands, your classic, classic endocrine hormone glands. The, the first endocrine hormones were actually found in the adrenal glands. Epinephrine was the first endocrine hormone to really be researched at the turn of the, at the, turn of the uh, 20th century. That's really when we started to explore hormones. They, they knew about hormones. They knew there was something that was being secreted in the blood as early as the mid-19th century. But they didn't know exactly what was going on. There was kind of a debate between, uh, between people, scientists who thought that the body was chemical primarily and that the body initiated its activity via chemistry and other scientists were thinking that the body was electrical primarily. Today we know it's both, electrical and chemical. And those are the two, these are the two major control systems of the body, the nervous system and the hormone system. But at the turn of, in the middle of the 19th century, there was kind of a debate. Was it body electrical or was it chemical? And they start to research and start to look into what the body was. By the turn of the 20th century, by 1900, they had discovered the first hormone, which was called epinephrine, or adrenaline, we call it today, came out of the adrenal glands. So the adrenal glands are considered the classic endocrine-making glands, but there's other glands that are important as well, obviously. Thyroid gland, thymus gland, ovaries, testes, pituitary, all of these glands. We're back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us, friends. We'll get your calls here in just a moment, and we do have a couple lines open at 844-236-6010, 844-236-6010. If you have questions about health or, longe uh, or the longevity products, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, or if you have a success story you'd like to share, if you've got a skin health issue, you will have questions about ingredients, or you just want to contribute to the conversation, 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. Tomorrow we'll continue talking about hormones. We'll talk about the very, very interesting spiritual relationship or relationship between hormones and spirituality. I consider myself personally a spiritual person and I don't, I don't really think there's a separation between our spiritual natures and our physical natures. We make that distinction artificially. We make a lot of distinctions artificially. But the way I look at it, spiritual health and mental health and emotional health and physical health all go hand in hand. I call it SMEP, 
spiritual, mental, emotional, physical. And as it turns out, the hormones may actually be the link between our physical natures and our spiritual natures. And we'll talk about that tomorrow. There's a really cool connection between the hormones and spirituality. We'll address that tomorrow as we continue talking hormone health. And then we'll talk about some, various, some of the various hormonal strategies or nutritional strategies that you can use to upregulate or enhance hormone chemistry. And we'll actually talk about hormones that you can use to enhance hormone chemistry. And we'll even talk about foods that you can use to help enhance hormone chemistry. That'll be all coming up in the next few days on the bright side. All right, 844-236-6010 is our number. I got, a, I got a note from my friend, Dr. Bonnie. Hello, Dr. Bonnie. I'm pretty sure you're listening to the program or the podcast or the, or the archive. Dr. Bonnie sent me a really cool link about ozone therapy. Last week, we talked about ozone and we talked about oxygen for treating cancer. Well, Dr. Bonnie has informed me correctly that ozone therapy, IV ozone therapy, stick in ozone, <laughs> stick in highly reactive ozone right into your blood can actually be used for dealing with cancer. Ozone therapy has been shown to turn on the immune system, to fight diseases, not just cancer, but all infectious diseases. Uh, ozone therapy is non-toxic, it improves the body's ability to utilize oxygen, and numerous, numerous papers talk about how it can heal liver problems, herpes, dental problems, diabetes, degenerative disease, and even cancer. And if you're dealing, God forbid, with cancer, you might want to look into ozone therapy. Go to www.aaot.us, and that is the American Academy of Ozone Therapy's website. And those guys are those guys have a lot of good information, papers and such. There's actually going to be a a, uh, a trade show, I guess it is. A, uh, the a first annual meeting or the, the fourth annual meeting was just last January. They do an annual meeting every January, I suppose. I think it's every January. Anyway, it's uh, aaot.us, and that is the American. Academy of Ozone Therapy. Lots of good information about ozone therapy for cancer, too. If you know God, anybody, God forbid, who's dealing with cancer, thank you, Dr. Bonnie, for, for pointing that out. Okay, let's see where we're at here. 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to New Jersey and welcome Shama to the bright side. Did I say that right, Shama? Shama? Um, close. Shama. Thank you. Shama. Oh, I remember you. Yes, we talked a bit. We talked before. Yeah. What's going on, Shama? Well, um, my wife is here with me. I think about four days ago, um, my um, blood pressure dropped to 90 over 50, and I mean, I almost fainted. And okay. um, I'm going to have, she's right here, because I'm a little short of breath. I'm going to let her take over. Hi. Okay. Good morning. Hey. Well, who am I speaking to? Hi. What's your name? What's my your name? name lady. I'm Lady. Can you hear me? Laney? Lady. L-A-D-Y. Oh, wow. Lady, that's a cool name. Did you, uh, were you the gal who was pregnant and I talked to you before you were having a baby? Was that no. you? No. Okay. No. Okay. Go ahead, lady. How can we help you? I'd like to backtrack to about seven years ago. I noticed a swelling in my husband's neck. Okay. And um, I think it was related to thyroid. It is, um, it was about a size of a golf ball back then. Okay. It's grown maybe over the years to about the size of a tennis ball you okay. only notice it well i notice it when he swallows so it's not something that's like protruding from his neck but i did notice it okay. so i do think he has some thyroid challenges going on okay. um but a couple of days ago well i would say uh lately he's been complaining that he has not been feeling himself he has not been feeling great normally this is a man who's like oh my gosh if, if there's not enough hours in a day how old is shama, shama? how old he's how old's your husband six. 56, 56. 5, 6? Okay. Yes. And okay. He, he actually is a minister. He's in the ministry. Praise God. And That's awesome. I'm glad yeah. to help a minister. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. Well, let me, um, let me, let's, do you have more to say? I was just saying thank you. Oh, okay. You're welcome. So here's the deal. Okay. Uh, it sounds like a goiter. I'm sure you know what that is. This, when the thyroid doesn't, can't find enough iodine, it'll get bigger in order to kind of pull iodine out of the blood. So thyroid is constantly sucking iodine out of the blood in order to make thyroid hormone. When iodine is not present, the thyroid will get bigger in an attempt to find whatever iodine it can find. So the first thing to do is iodine. Is he on iodine or using iodine? Not to my knowledge. Well, get him on it quickly. Iodine is an amazingly, amazingly important element. It's the element of life. 
you know, we're going to talk about the thyroid here in the next few days because when it comes to hormones, there is no more important hormone than thyroid hormone. Every one of the hundred and trillions, 100 trillion cells in the body depends on thyroid hormone to do its work. Bone cells need thyroid hormone to make bone. Muscle cells need thyroid hormone to contract. Heart cells need thyroid hormone to beat. Uh, adrenal cells need thyroid hormone to make adrenal hormones. Every single cell in the body does its business under the regulation of thyroid hormone. It's not only the most, uh, in my opinion, arguably anyway, the most important hormone in the body. It may be the most important hormone in all of biology, in all of life. I mean, fungus cells depend on thyroid hormone, their version of it, that is. All cells in life, in biological life, all cells, higher cells anyway, uh, animal cells for sure, depend on thyroid hormone. It's a, a super important substance. And thyroid hormone itself depends on iodine. So without iodine, you're going to have a problem. This is why people always recommend iodine for the thyroid, sometimes mistakenly. There's a lot of folks who take iodine for all thyroid problems. You know, even alternative health practitioners will say, oh, you got a thyroid problem, use iodine. It doesn't work that way. Iodine is not going to help the thyroid gland itself if it's under attack, say from an autoimmune disease or if the thyroid gland is overworked. Iodine is not like a magical cure, but when the, iodine, when the thyroid gets really big, like uh, as in a goiter, yes, indeed, uh, uh, iodine can be helpful. So get on, uh, get on uh, iodorol. You can get it off the internet, I-O-D-E-R-O-L, Iodorol, uh, and tr maybe to start off with something like 25 to 50 micrograms, uh, and then you can go up to 100, 125 micrograms a day. Some people take a lot more than that, but just see where you're at, kind of play with the dose and see if the, the goiter gets better. That may make all the difference in the world, just that. The next thing to do is start to look for other factors. The thyroid itself will get burnt out or will we'll start to become dysfunctional or weakened, if you will, when the body is under chronic long-term stress, especially from a lack of oxygen, too much sugar, and digestive problems. These are what I call the, and I'm sure you've heard me say this before, the triangle of disease. The digestive system, the blood sugar system, and then the adrenal thyroid link, the adrenal thyroid axis, or the adrenal thyroid complex. So by backtracking to stabilizing the adrenal glands through deep breathing techniques, and I'll tell you a few other things you could do, and then uh, stabilizing the blood sugar and then working on the digestive system, you can do a lot of things for the thyroid, especially if it's something like Hashimoto's thyroid. Hang on. We'll finish up when we come back from our break, lady. Thanks for your call. Don't go away. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. All right. We're back on The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. We're talking to Lady in New Jersey about hypothyroidism and iodine. Are you there, ma'am, lady? Yes, I am. Thank you so oh. much, Pharmacist uh, Ben. Okay. And I did want to let you know that... Go ahead. No, you go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I did want to let you know that the swelling is its not symmetrical. It's asymmetrical. It's more like just on one side, very large on one side. It, yeah, that's, so, that, does, that doesn't necessarily mean... You know what you might want to do is Google... Go to Google Images. I don't know if you ever use that. Google Images and Google Goiter. And you'll get a lot of pictures okay. of goiter. Some of them are hideous, and it doesn't sound like your husband has that has that severe a problem, but... Um, it, it does sound to me like a goiter, and he does have some of the symptoms of that. Low blood pressure can definitely do it. Adrenal fatigue can do it, which uh, in turn can be caused by blood sugar problems and digestive problems. These are your points of control, okay? So iodine can help if he has an iodine deficiency, and the chances are pretty good that he does. Is he a seafood eater? Is he a vegetarian? Mostly We're, vegetarian, yes. Mostly vegetarian. No, he's not eating fish I'm and sorry. seafood? I should Is he yes, eating fish? No, he, he Fish. Yes, he, he, he is eating fish. Okay. Well, you get iodine and seafood. That's the main source of iodine. Iodine is an ocean mineral, uh, primarily. So people who don't live near the water or who, are, who aren't eating seafood are going to be at risk for iodine deficiency. Getting on iodine can help. That's the first thing to do. Second thing to do is start to work on the adrenal glands. Oxygenation is extremely important. It does sound like he has some adrenal problems. I'm not sure if it's caused by the thyroid or it's caused by the blood sugar in the digestive system because it's a big circle. Uh, it could be either or. Uh, so the iodine might help with that. Iodine is also important for the adrenal glands too. Making sure he's doing his deep breathing techniques, get on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine. It, that could be very, very helpful for uh, adrenal health issues. Uh, make it, and if he's a vegetarian, he's going to have an issue with, with cholesterol, possibly have an issue with cholesterol. Uh, so making sure that he is uh, 
uh, you know, cholesterol is only found. He doesn't eat. He doesn't do dairy or or uh, eggs. Yes, does he, do? he does. Okay, dairy and eggs. Those those can be helpful for.